just blend some of that tree into the path. I'm going back to my fan brush and I'm going to indicate some more grasses. So I've painted the tree in, I'm now putting the grasses in in front of the tree. Still indicating the shape, because I'm putting highlights in, it will indicate the shape or the lay of the land. Put it on quite strong, flick a few bits of paint up to indicate grasses. Still painting from the back of that painting to the front. I'm now working on the rocks in the foreground, get the palette knife, the same technique as I used in the background boulders, pick up some of that opaque paint and wrap the opaque paint around the rocks to indicate the shape of them. Adding all the different colours, putting it on quite thick, putting it on quite thick because this now is quite close to me. Put the paint on, move it in the direction or the shape of the boulders. On it goes, making them round. If I want some things to stand up, my strokes will be vertical. If I want them to lie down, they'll be more horizontal. I don't want to lose my darks though. So we, I don't want to cover all the dark areas, just the places where I want the highlights. Back to the fan brush and just putting in a few more lighter greens where I think it needs it. Scooping it up, putting it on really strong opaque paint to make this foreground really come into the viewer's living room. You see how much paint I've scooped up? So I'm really, the brush, I'm not using the strokes of the brush or the bristles of the brush really other than to carry the paint at this point. And get that paint and just stick it onto the paint that's already on the canvas. Now I've got the palette knife and I'm using the point of the palette knife just to sort of scrape out a few grasses. Because the paint's dry underneath, if I pull that palette knife through the opaque paint, it'll show the dark underpainting. Get back to the fan brush and flicking up a few, few bits of grasses to show some vertical strokes in the foreground. Go back, just touch up a few things in the midground, yellow ochres, lemon yellows, cobalt blues, all with just a touch of the titanium white to make it semi opaque or opaque. Now, my painting's a bit wet at the moment. I would normally leave this for about another hour to stiffen up, but we'll press on. Working on this foreground tree in the same manner as I did the previous tree. Put some of the dark colour on first so I've got some quite thick paint on that tree and then get the opaque paints, tap it on one edge and draw it round giving me a cylindrical shape. I just want to make this tree a little bit stronger and so I'm using the palette knife to push another bow, another part of the tree trunk over the one that I previously painted just to make sure that people believe this tree is closer to us than the one I previously painted. Then the opaque paint on, just tapped and pulled round, tapped and pulled round. Try not to disturb the transparent paint I've just put on. Back to the greens. Just touch that middle tree up a little bit more. And then work on this foreground tree.
Now what I'm painting in this painting, I'm painting all the different elements that you would find in the countryside. So once you know how to do a sky, you know how to do background trees, mid-ground trees, the, the meadows, the, the ground, and all the other components that are in this painting, then hopefully you will adapt, you'll paint this painting along with me and you'll adapt all these different components into your own landscape. Now I'll be painting, in fact I have painted a few more paintings on how to, uh, some Welsh countrysides on rolling rivers and, and, and over boulders and, and castles and all sorts of things and I'm really looking forward to doing the voiceovers on those and uh, hopefully it'll help me do a bit more painting. If you know how to start and what to do next that's a really big help in painting. Once you paint my paintings, you paint along with me, then it means that you've learnt the notes, you've learnt how to play the instrument, then it's up to you to compose your own music, but you really need to play, you really need to be able to play the instrument first. I'm just working on the path a little bit more, the paint stiffened up uh, so that I can actually blend some of the paint, it was a little bit sort of slidey and sloppy before, but it's starting to, to get tacky and perfect to paint on. And this is about, uh, I would say, six hours into a painting. This painting is a 24 inch by 18 inch canvas. Uh, the bigger the canvas, the longer it takes you to paint. It's as simple as that. But 24 by 18 is a good one for a landscape. And this has taken me about six hours to paint this painting. And that's been based over two afternoons. I did the first uh, half of the painting. Oops, nearly got me, me cuff in the paint there. I did the first painting in about three hours, let it dry, and now the finishing off one, where I'm on now, took me about another three hours. I'm using my rigger, just painted a bit more foliage in the trees. I'm using my rigger now to sort of indicate individual stems of grasses or reeds by having some paint in medium, thin down paint, twist the rigger as you pull it through the thick paint, and it helps it to, uh, to flow a bit putting a few or indicating a few flowers the sort of in my part of the world in Nottinghamshire in, in England uh, we get quite a lot of foxgloves around June and July so by putting something like foxgloves into the painting I'm telling the viewer it's it's sort of June or July if it was bluebells it would probably be April or May whatever whichever country you're in when you're watching this indicate a few flowers on occasions whatever is local to you at uh, the season that uh, applies and it helps the viewer to get a feel for what you're trying to paint. Just tap in, it's still an impressionistic picture, not too much detail in. Just getting the length of the rigger and tapping it on. I think I'll put a few more grasses in the foreground. Now, I've got my rigger with a thin down paint and it's a little bit fiddly, so rather than using the palette knife, I'm using the rigger to put on a few highlights in these boulders in the foreground. So it gives me a bit more control than the palette knife. Still thin down paint because the paint on the canvas is still very wet and I need it to stick. We'll just indicate a few little grasses or twigs coming out of the water. And put a little bit of reflection in as well. That dark contrasting boulder in the foreground makes the light areas in the water sing. We'll just put a few little grasses and reeds in there. That's about the only detail that I've painted in this painting. And it's probably the only bit of detail I am going to paint. Because I'm getting near the end of this painting now. In fact, you could I could keep on painting this painting, putting in a little man or a cottage or a roof or something, or more twigs, more grasses. I'd keep painting this for a couple of hours, but I'm going to leave it as it is. I'll just put a few more individual reeds and grasses in the foreground, just draw a few in. Incidentally, if you have any difficulties with your paintings or you need some advice, then don't hesitate to contact me through the website. Do you not be bothering me because it's artists for artists. We artists have got to stick together. I'm led to believe that we need politicians and we need important people. But, you know, I tend to know who Rembrandt is. But to be honest, I couldn't tell you who the Prime Minister was when Rembrandt was a lad. So don't hesitate to contact me if you need any advice on any painting. And... I'm starting to fiddle a little bit now. Uh, I've enjoyed this painting, thank you.